Hello world and welcome back to another Applied Logistics video where today we're going to be going spatial. Now when you first see spatial storage you probably think of something similar to this as we showed in the previous episode with basically giving you a big amount of storage. Especially when you go inside here and if you type in spatial you'll start seeing these storage dicks where you see 2 cubed, 16 cubed and 128 cubed. However it's not all about to do with items, it's about to do with physical structures. Now it's a very complicated thing to get going but once you wrap your head around it it's not too bad you're going to need a handful of different things though to get this started main thing going to be the spatial pylons these are made with two fluix cables four quartz glass two fluix dust and a fluix crystal you're going to need plenty of these but you only get one per craft so it's a little bit expensive next you're going to need a spatial io port for this you're going to need an me io port two fluix dust three glass an engineer's processor and two ingots now, if you haven't seen already, the MEIO port is made with two drives, a logic processor, two ingots, Fluix cable, and some glass. And then it gets to your three different types of discs. For this, you're going to need three different sizes depending on how big you want it. The first one for the two cube spatial components, you're going to need four Fluix dusts, an engineered processor, and four gold dust. You get one of these at a time. Then from that it's the exact same craft but using the spatial 2 components to get the 16 cubed and then the same goes for the 128 cubed. From that onwards you can just make your simple uh, cell craft which we've seen plenty of times over and then depending on which one you want to use you just slap that in the center or if you so want to you can make the craft and then put any component you want inside just like this and then you can shift click it or doesn't look like you can shift click it out just like other cells. Now this here is going to be our first basic setup here now I'm going to demonstrate what it does first and let's see if you can guess what it is what we're going to do is going to take our two cube spatial storage disk here and I'm going to give it a redstone signal and suddenly this block disappears then what I can do is place it back inside and press it again and it reappears this is what I mean by this disk being able to store space instead of items this pylon structure here is managing to get this one singular block of data it doesn't do anything adjacent and it doesn't do anything on the end so it cuts off on the ends here which is why we have it as a one by one by one here and when you're inside it says that the spatial io port recognizes a one by one by one i can extend this if i went further out by one block each way then we can do a two by two by two square meaning that i can now do this as well so if i place this in here and i do this it's not going to work because I need the next size up. So let's get a 16 by 16. I do that and there we go. It disappears now. Place that back inside and it comes back alive again. But let's start with small stuff. How do you make this system? First, you're going to need a controller and your spatial IO port. Now, something to note is you can only do one spatial system per network, meaning one per controller, or if you're just using power and no controller, one per network. When you place one of these spatial blocks down, it's going to look like it's OK. But the moment you place the second one down, that is meaning that your things aren't connected up correctly. The red line means it's wrong. You know it's correct when you've got all this purple up. Now each pylon is going to use up a channel as you see here we've got three channels coming in and we've got our three different pylons. What you want to do is the X, Y and Z axis in order to define an area that you want to actually create. Now this can be as long as you want but obviously the largest spatial storage disk can go up to 128 by 128 by 128 which is a very large area so I could go out this way 128 blocks up and that way 128 blocks and that would be our largest area as long as you know that the bottom isn't going to be used because it doesn't work with anything adjacent like that and it cannot be anything up adjacent on this side as well so it's only within the area so think of this spatial pylon as a frame. Besides that, it's all pretty self-explanatory. When you have it powered, it goes purple, as you can see here, and then it gives you your information inside. There is a maximum amount of power it can hold and how much it can store, as you can see here. This can be toggled between RF and AE, if you so wish. It tells you how much the power is going to be required in order to actually make your blocks disappear. In our case, it's 10 KE. Um, and then you have your efficiency. We're going to talk about efficiency in a second. And then you have your um, spatial area that you can do, which is at the moment a one by one by one block. Now, the only thing you need to remember with this is that you can actually see something a little bit deceptive here. If I place one more block here, everything goes purple as if it's correct. But inside of here it even says what it is. But this has to be all even and exact. If I click this now, even though it's sort of saying it can do it, it's not going to do it. It's only when everything is exactly even like I had before will it work. Of course, I need to change the disk there for that one to work. 
There we go. How about we get to something a little bit more advanced? Here is the exact same setup here with a diamond block here, but what we have is something a little bit different. When I right click this now, you can see it's just changed block. Now, how have I done this? It's a very simple design, but all we are doing is taking our our spent cell out of a system using our import bus and putting it into a chest using a storage bus so it will automatically push it through and then on the other side we have here another import bus pushing it out into our machine so we have one port in here as you can see here one cell in here and then inside of here i have two more now each of these are saved with a different block now the way i've done this is that you have to make sure that your spatial io port is connected to your pylons and obviously your one network and what I've done is so nothing gets mixed up, say you have a drive uh, or something, you don't want your spatial ports to go over to your drive. We've just separated them with by using fiber cables, so they do get power, but they don't actually uh, end up messing with our main line here. And we have this split, split up with uh, color-coded cables, as you see here. So as I click this, it's just going to be able to rotate blocks. So what it's doing is pasting the, pre the one that's in there and taking and copying what the block is. So it's just basically replacing this. So we're doing this on a small scale, but what you could do if you wanted, you could make a single room or a single, say, 128 by 128 by 128 room. Inside of that, you can build, say, four or five designs, and then you can just rotate them all of one simple button. It's pretty cool, and it's a little bit advanced. I will say that this design is not mine. This is from the Minecrafters, uh, but anyone could figure this out. Something else to note is that I did try this with a regular chest, but for some reason, it wasn't really pulling them out in a good order. So I don't know if there's any specific uh, properties with the skystone chest but it just seems to work better with it so how about we explain efficiency here here we have got a larger cube here as you can see and inside we've just got it solid with orange and we've got a frame on the outside so it's a five uh, four by four by four area we have here as you can see we can use a four by four by four area so inside of this all we have to do is now right click on this and obviously it disappears hooray but let's talk about this efficiency as you can see we're only at 53 percent efficiency now now all the efficiency basically means is how much power is going to be used because we're not very efficient more power is being used as we see we've got about 1 million ae being used every time we want to hit this button which is quite a lot we are using creative power here so it doesn't bother me but in your single player world you want to be saving as much power as possible now the very simple way of getting more efficiency is by simply adding more pylons if i add more pylons along here i'll just add two more lines as you can see here this is just going to make your efficiency go up to now 82 and as you can see that's already dramatically dropped our power usage to 320 29,000 as you can see here so it's a lot better now what you want to make sure is that you have these connected with your cables you don't want it connecting directly straight away otherwise that will break the whole system so you want to have a link using these first now these don't have to be matching you don't have to go all the way to the very end uh, but as you can see that your efficiency drops down so what we can do is we can make these the same sort of length over here and add a few more now these aren't touching the ends but now we're at 96 percent so you just gotta sort of fiddle around to see how much you want and there we go we're now at a hundred now 100 percent efficiency makes this only use 156,000, so it's a lot better and now for something really advanced here we have a base this is my little house here it didn't take me long to build not gonna lie but inside we have a couple of different things we've got ourselves a drive we've got our ourselves our terminal here so we can access it and we can do a bit of auto crafting if we so wish now outside of this this is where i'm keeping my controller this is going to be my base but there's something i can do pretty cool with this what i can do is if i take a button here i can just put it on this spatial port you probably guess where this is going i'm able to zap my entire base completely away and i can have this on me wherever i want all I could do is I could just pick this up, I could then take all the system and I could walk away and then completely paste my base somewhere else, which is pretty powerful. However, there is something else I could do. Similar to what I was saying over here is that I could put a completely different build inside this area and just paste it in, which is pretty cool. So what I have here as well is I've got our same system going underground here where it will automatically go round out and then back in. So I can paste this down as much many times as I want, as you can see here, which is pretty cool. But there's something else I want to do as well and I'm going to show this off very shortly the first thing I want to show is that we can obviously activate this with the redstone signal so the best way to do this if you want to is using a p2p tunnel meaning you don't have to do it directly on the block and you can do it from a designated place away in your base if I right click this here you can see it disappears now something to note is that with those all those terminals inside of here if I click that when I'm in this terminal I can see it that is what 
this little block is here. It's connecting to my inside my house. But something to note is that when this is loaded into a tile, you will not be able to see what's inside. It's only when it's loaded into the real world that things sort of connect. But there's something else I can do, which is quite powerful. If we go inside the base here, we have got another toggle switch here, and this is linked to a, another P2P tunnel. Because there's something very cool you can do with this. We can be inside the cell itself. It's pretty powerful. Now, we are in a void, but don't worry. You can't actually get out of the edge. You can only be within however size pylon you've made. So if you wanted to, you can make the pylons a lot bigger, and then you'll be able to have your little space out here. Now, something else which is pretty cool is you can build inside of here, and it will obviously save. And if we go back to the other world, like so, that is going to transport with us as well, as you can see. Now, something to note is that I've made this a lever. The reason I've made this a lever is when you have a button, sometimes it can glitch and the button will stay in the press position when you're going between both worlds. Now, something that I have, obviously I have this linked up, but how do I have this linked up? Very sneakily, I have hid ourselves a one of these quantum link chambers. The quantum link is linked to another quantum link that I have here. This is how I'm sending my redstone signal through dimensions and allowing me to actually press my redstone spatial port out here from inside the disk. However, failing that, it's always very important to make sure you have a secondary way of getting out of there, which is why I have my mechanism teleportation frame. Because if I went into here, what I can actually do is give myself a second way of escaping here. Make sure you turn this off. I can get my second way of escaping here and, and then I come out. But obviously, as you can see, I can't go back in again because that place is completely unloaded. It's not chunk loaded anymore. Uh, it's inside the disk, so I can't get back. So that's why you want to make sure you have your redstone signal not being sent, even though it wouldn't have power anyway. But now it works and we have our chambers linked up again. Now, there's one more thing that's very cool and quite important when it comes to an AE system. And this is using a spatial anchor. This is made with three spatial pylons, a 128 cubed spatial component, two flux cables, two iron ingots and an engineering processor. And what this essentially is, is a chunk loader. If we go over to our handy little area over here, this is our most advanced base, we place this down here, it will activate. And what we can do is we can right click on it and it will tell us some information. It's currently using 86 AE per tick and it's loaded three chunks. And this is spanning across multiple worlds if we had more worlds uh, enabled. Right now we only have one world because obviously this is all in this section. However, if I press this button here, what's gonna happen, the spatial anchor, is actually going to still say one world because it's not exactly another dimension it's actually on a card so make keep that in mind however if we had our quantum link in the nether this would start chunk loading in the nether as well now the cool thing about this is that if i overlay my mode here we can see that these are the chunks that are currently being loaded we've got three chunks and the reason we've got three chunks is because that is how far our ae network is expanded to However, I can make this go a little bit further if we got ourselves some fluids cable here. I can then start running this out further. And as I run this out further, more chunks are going to start being um, uh, used up, provided that I have a block that's actually needing to use it. So let's put that there. There we go. We now have a fourth chunk being used. And so you can just expand this however much as you want. You just got to keep it in mind that obviously more power will be used, the more chunks are being used. I highly recommend using the spatial anchor when you're doing things like playing inside of these cells, because otherwise that is something that can break, say your chunk D loads with your P2P tunnel inside of here and you don't have your second way of getting out, your system will always still be chunk loaded, allowing you to actually disappear. Now there is one more thing I should mention when it comes to these spatial disks. If you have a disk loaded here and you have something else on a disk and decide you want to put it in, make sure that you have already taken out your other one first because if you load a new disk into your area it will delete all of this so you have to be very careful of that i'm not going to do it because i don't want to destroy this that i've built but just be careful always make sure you unload and save your disk onto a blank disk first before printing a new one it's very different to what we have over here as this is both printing a disk and pasting a disk at the same time 
but you don't want to do that here when you're doing something a little bit more manual. But for now, guys, that is going to be everything when it comes to spatial storage inside of AE2. It starts off simple, but when you do things like moving entire bases in the palm of your hand, then it gets a little bit more complicated. If you have any questions, please don't forget to leave a comment down below. But if this video helped you out in any way, shape or form, please don't forget to leave a like and subscribe. It would really help me out and ring the bell button to stay notified when these videos go live. I think there's going to be only one more episode now showing all the extra bits and bobs that you can do inside of AE2, and I hope that you stick around for that. But until next time, guys, take care.